Once upon a time, there was this thing called the Apple Newton. It was about the size of a small paperback book. It had a monochrome LCD screen, a uh, touch screen actually, which you could write and draw on with a stylus. It promised to read your natural handwriting and uh, sync with all your contact and calendar information on your desktop or if you were one of the rare ones at the time your laptop it had no internet access because the internet wasn't a thing at that time the apple newton promised much and it paved the way for a whole new type of device but itself was a flop it didn't work as it should have it couldn't read handwriting very well and uh, there's not much that it could do other than that since it didn't read handwriting the the rest of uh, what it offered was basically a fancy calendar and contact address book actually since there was no internet no ebooks <laughs> nothing much else you could do with it but then along came pilot which was about the size of a deck of cards much smaller than the newton it promised less you also had to write on it with a stylus and you had to learn a, a special handwriting called graffiti for the pilot a simplified form which actually you could learn in a day it was pretty simple so the pilot didn't promise to read your natural handwriting it promised to read the modified script which was keen to understand and it did that very well it synced effortlessly with your desktop or your laptop and all your contacts and all your calendar info was right there in the palm of your hand or in your shirt pocket in a device about the size of a deck of cards and it was really popular they had some legal issues I believe with the name pilot uh, with the pilot pen company and so they changed their name to palm pilot and from there they dropped the pilot altogether and uh, I'm not very clear on the device that came after the palm pilot I think it was called the palm 2 which was not very popular but then along came the Palm 3, which sold like hotcakes. It was arguably the first handheld device that was like ready for prime time. It was awesome. Its battery lasted for destructible. Kind of the way we, yeah, 3310 nowadays. You could say the Palm 3 was the Nokia 3310 of handheld devices. But it had, it, it had a horrible name though. You could say you got a pilot and non-generic name, except it might be confused with a pen. You could say you got a palm pilot and everyone would know what you're talking about. But if you were to tell somebody that you were going to get a palm three, they'd probably say, where are you going to put it? You don't even have space in your garden. You live in an apartment. Where are you going to plant the palm tree? So, the palm tree, horrible name. Uh, from there on, they released the palm five, which also did very well. And then a whole bunch of other palm devices.
bike hardly as iconic. Uh, about the time of the Palm 3, Microsoft decided to get in on the game. They released the Palm PC, which then also got them into some legal challenges with the Palm Computing Company and Microsoft changed their name to the handheld PC which they marketed as in the stylized form of the H slash PC uh, which were basically like Palm devices on steroids that's when color screen started coming in processing power increased battery life reduced dramatically and a whole bunch of forgettable devices were released. This morphed into the uh, Pocket PC and before that the, what was it, Windows CE. Windows CE became the Pocket PC, a bunch of forgettable devices and uh, there on into Windows Mobile for what they called mobile devices. These were essentially computers that could fit in your and make phone calls. Um, again, a whole bunch of forgettable devices. Meanwhile, Microsoft was developing something called with the code name Origami and this got everyone excited. The idea of a device called Origami it was a small computer that could fit into the palm of your hand. Um, everyone got excited. You think of the word origami, it's a piece of paper that's folded in really and what you have is a 3D object. It could be a rhino, it could be a rose, it could be a, a little dinosaur, it could be anything. And that sparked people's imaginations of what the origami device could do for them. And so when Microsoft finally launched it, they retired the code name as tech companies uh, often do. And they released the Ultra Mobile PC, stylized as the UMPC. And everyone quickly forgot about it. And I don't think I've ever actually seen a device in the wild. <laughs> anyway, then Apple came out with a device uh, during the height of the Palm 3 craze. They came out with a tiny device and everyone was expecting uh, a mobile device, a PDA as they call it, Personal Digital Assistant. And what Apple released instead was a little news layer, also the size of a deck of cards, called the iPod. <laughs> Not music player, uh, digital audio player, or anything like that. They just called it an iPod. And everyone was like, what's an iPod? Oh, it's a device that plays digital music, fits in your pocket. And the uh, critics said Apple really blew it again. Everyone's looking for PDAs. Palm Tree was hot in the market. Apple could have easily made a better Palm 3. Instead, they came out with a music player, not a toy, just like the Macintosh was a toy. But uh, of course, the iPod took the market by storm. It was one of those Apple devices that basically sold 9 out of 10 in its category. Just like, well, let's not get ahead of myself. So the iPod took the market by storm, became the category leader in itself. And, and the, the experts laughed it away. But it changed the world. Well, at least the first world. <laughs> of people who don't have to worry about where their food is coming from and have to only worry about stuff like when their next album of their favorite artist is going to drop. 
So he changed that rule. Anyway, and so many years later, along comes the iPhone. And again, it created a new category. And for a time, it dominated that category. For a time, it was the category. There were hardly anything that could compete with it for a time. Now, but for a time, for many years, well, many in tech terms, just a few years, <laughs> the iPhone was the phone, the only smartphone, the category leader, the great pioneer and leader, and the category 9 out of 10 phones. Uh, Apple did that again. And they didn't call it a mobile device. They didn't call it a palm top PC, which actually is what it is. It's a computer, a full powered computer that fits into your hand. They called it an iPhone. I don't know about you, but personally, phone calling is the least thing that I do on my phone, my smartphone. Making actual phone calls is the least amount of time usage on my phone. But Apple just called it an iPhone because that's what people know. They know it as a phone, this device, the cellular phone, the mobile phone. It's their phone. So instead of trying to describe the device as Microsoft did by calling it a handheld PC, a palm top PC, an ultra mobile PC, because Microsoft had a vested interest in making everything a PC since they sold the operating system for PCs. So instead of trying to describe this device, like calling it a PDA, Personal Digital Assistant, Apple just called it an iPhone because what everyone does is they carry their phones around. They carry their phones around, so why not carry a phone that does more than phone calls and we'll just call it an iPhone. So that changed the world again 10 years ago. The iPhone. What, what do I learn from this? Really, there are two high points in this story. It's the Palm device and the iPhone. I'm not an Apple fanboy, by the way. I'm recording this on an Android phone. But uh, what's an Android but a glorified iPhone, anyway. <laughs> so I know that might probably piss off some Android fanboys. <laughs> but uh, really, the original Androids were just copies of iOS, which wasn't even called iOS at the time. Nevertheless, I don't have a dog in this fight. I've used iOS, I'm using Android, and I'm fine with both. At the moment though, I prefer Android because of uh, the ability to integrate deeply into the operating system. But back to, back to the high points of this long, rambling, little, loose history of mobile device arena when I remember the Palm 3 which is the device I fell in love with it's a device that did what you needed it to do really just sync with your PC so that you have your notes on hand and your calendar, and your contacts. That's really all you wanted at that time. It was like carrying a little 
pocket calendar and a pocket uh, phone book and a little pocket notepad all in one device in your pocket that's synced with your desktop computer and to me that was bliss or as Scott Adams says nerdvana so the Palm 3 was one experience of nerdvana for me because it did what I wanted it to do as a human being what I as a human being wanted it to do likewise for the iPod you wanted to have your music with you and that's what it did and then the iPhone and by extension all smartphones today it simply did what you wanted it to do you wanted to have a phone because you carried your phone around with you all the time before I had a smartphone I carried a, a normal dumb phone or what the industry calls a feature phone and I had all my information on it I used it basically as a texting machine being an introvert I prefer not to make phone calls unless I have to <laughs> or just mirroring real life as I have few but focused and deep conversations so I also have few but focused and deep phone calls the rest of the time I'll be texting and writing notes on them and that's what the iPhone did also opened up a whole other bunch of stuff like games and of course the big thing the internet which by 2007 had become mainstream The iPhone did what I, as a human being, needed it to do. And that's how it just took off and took over the world. So bringing it back home again. Do I, as a person, try to describe myself? by looking at myself and seeing what I do and what I believe and saying that therefore I am this kind of person or that kind of a person do I look at myself and say that I am a writer or do I make myself of these am I a writer or a philosopher is that what you as a human being need me to be No, you do not need me to be a philosopher. You do not need me to be a writer. You do not need me to be a preacher. What you need me to be is a friend, a person, a human being to you. So if I dabble in philosophy, what you need me to be is someone who can explain it to you in your own language. If I am a preacher of Christ's gospel what you need a preacher but what you need me to be is to be a person who can explain it to you in a human and understandable and relatable way you do not need me behind the pulpit preaching down at you but you need me sitting across from you and talking to you about what the gospel of Christ is if I am a writer you do not need me to be a writer to write something for you what you need is for me to be someone who can explain it to you in clear and understandable language you do not need me to be a thinker it is for me to be someone who can have a conversation with you to talk about what I think about and what you think about and what we feel and what is the nature of life and the truth of all that is so yeah i guess what i'm saying is don't try and describe yourself as an ultra mobile personal computer but rather define yourself as origami and people say what on earth is origami and then you say here this is what i do so you don't try and describe yourself as a digital music player but you define yourself as an iPod and 
people say what on earth is an iPod and you say yeah this is what I do and they experience that and say wow this is awesome this is just what I need so don't try and describe yourself by what you see on your business card or your school transcripts or the diploma that you hang on your wall don't try and describe yourself in that way but define yourself as who you are and be of use bring healing bring life bring growth bring enlightenment bring inspiration to the person seated across from you when moses pressed god to describe himself to identify himself he gave no name he gave no description no preamble no introduction like the way you introduce a speaker coming on stage he said to moses i am who i am what kind of an answer is that you ask a person who are you and he says i am who i am i'm not going to describe myself to you i define myself as me i am who i am now you discover what that means so likewise we are made in the image of god we don't fit into a box and we don't we are not described by labels we are defined by who we are who we experience ourselves to be and who others experience ourselves to be so with that i say good night